Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday. It is the Earth Master out here, April 17th, 2024. It's about 11.51 a.m. here. California time, latest activity on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.7 into the Hawaii area. We did see some uh, larger scale movement overnight with a 6.2 earthquake here striking into the Japan area earlier this morning few aftershocks occurring following that earthquake as well it did strike over here just on the northwestern edge here of the filipino plate about 25 kilometers deep here into this little subduction zone again 6.3 uh it was definitely felt out there quite a few uh, folks reported feeling it in the area of the epicenter the pager system though uh fortunately is uh, green and not a whole lot of economic losses or damage expected. Now, it is a pretty deep earthquake, or a pretty large earthquake, right? Uh, I had a few folks asking me, what's going on? How come there's so many earthquakes out here around Japan recently? Well, I pulled up the last 24 years of earthquake activity here, specifically around the Japan area. And if you look, this is just 6.0 and above. That's a lot of earthquake activity. 216 right divide that by 24 years and that averages about nine 6.0 or larger earthquakes per year so really we're not seeing anything elevated out here at all in terms of uh, the movement out here across japan this is very common to see six pointers uh, they build their buildings and houses um, accordingly to withstand the earthquake shaking out here because it's so active in this region uh, if you look at the plate dynamics out here of Japan right about here zoom in a little bit here is the uh, Japan area this is the Filipino plate in the red this is the Pacific plate here in the kind of the yellow color and we got the Eurasia plate over here to the west all these arrows pointing into one region right well, a couple, one region over here against the western edge of the uh, Filipino plate. But Japan's included in that. So the slip rate is quite high here, meaning that it takes uh, less time to accumulate enough strain and stress along a plate boundary or fault system compared to other areas over here where the arrows are uh, just kind of sliding past each other or drifting away from each other. This is a crunch zone, so to speak, I call it, where all the plates tend to come together and create these large earthquakes on any given day, on any given month. Another thing that uh, I went ahead and checked out, someone said, man, it seems like this year is very active in terms of earthquake activity. Well, let's go look at that. Here is the activity so far this year right a lot of people would be shocked to see that there's that many earthquakes 1900 earthquakes 1930 earthquakes out here since the first of january but this is all very typical very typical in this time frame in fact if we were to look last year at this time compared to the first of 2023 we were already ahead by a couple hundred earthquakes so this is uh this time last year from the 1st of January, 2023 to the April 17th, 2023 time period. Look at that, 2,146 compared to 1930 so far this year. So literally we are behind a couple hundred earthquakes in terms of 4.5 and above. So this is nothing new uh, with this earthquake activity that we're seeing around Japan. It happens a lot. So hopefully I can make that clear out there. They see some large earthquakes, obviously, but uh, 6.3 is a minimal earthquake compared to what they can get. Now, see if we started seeing multiple eights out here this year, yeah, then we could say, yeah, I think they're definitely on the uptick, but that's not the case out here. All right, so what do we have for now? We got that 6.3. Again, about 7 o'clock my time here a few hours ago. Uh, really no further movement along the plate boundary. Now, I know we got a couple aftershocks out here. It looks like in the three and four range, that is very common here with a six-pointer. So that could continue for a little while. Not for sure if we're expecting, I don't think we're expecting uh, anything larger out here. There's always a potential, of course, right? But uh, in this location, we have been seeing, uh, we've seen a seven-pointer up here or within this little bay area and quite a few aftershocks in the last um well it's been over well over a month since that took place a few months actually time just seems to be uh slipping away really quickly uh either way you know it's 
A six-pointer, not that rare out here across the Japan area. Taiwan has recently seen some larger movement over here as well. Um, and you can see the aftershock activity continuing, but declining daily. Uh, they got about 135 earthquakes here following that large 7.4. And then they seen an aftershock there a few minutes later as a 6.4. But the multitude of quakes are dying down. The aftershock sequence with that 7.4 is very common for that type of magnitude. So expect more aftershocks. Really not expecting anything further out there unless we start seeing some more sixes. Then that might be a key indicator, of maybe something bigger looming out there on the horizon for that area. All right, looking at the rest of the globe, way down south here, um, close to Antarctica, off of the plate boundary. You got a couple of fives coming in here. A little odd to see it away from the plate boundary. Uh, and also Australia, seen a 4.1 coming in. Goodness, that's a pretty decent earthquake out there. Uh, let's see what we got for that earthquake. As far as the specifics go, this would be from the EMSC model showing uh, the earthquake activity here in question near the coast of South Australia. Pretty shallow, at least according to the EMSC. Shows one kilometer depth there for that earthquake. Uh, definitely uh, looks like some population density out there as well. A few folks uh, reported, well, maybe maybe they didn't. Doesn't look like anyone reported the, uh, the testimony of any shaking being felt. But there was an earthquake, obviously. Uh, let's go back here to the main map here. USGS not reporting on this four-pointer. Uh, they should, but uh, it's not being reported. Also, some activity across the New Zealand area, I think, with all this movement stirring up out here across the plate boundary and inland, these intraplate earthquakes, that's more of a time to watch this area across the New Zealand region. They really haven't seen any large-scale adjustment yeah, a four here, a four there on occasion, a couple threes, including it looks like a three-pointer coming in right now uh, to the Kermadec Trench area, uh, or just looks like the very extreme southern end of the Kermadec Trench off the North Island coast here. Uh, still seeing some deeper activity, so I expect this to move here uh, soon. Again, we really haven't seen any major activity. Look at the last 30 days here of this region. Uh, this is a New Zealand area. They did see a 4.8. That's kind of a moderate quake here off the plate boundary. Uh, but some 4s and 3s and quite a few other smaller quakes that are not listed on the map have been occurring. And deeper quakes underneath the North Island region here recently. But really no large-scale movement. Uh, 4.8 wouldn't be considered large-scale movement out here. So we'll continue to watch the New Zealand area uh, for some further activity following this event today and the earthquake activity in Australia. Up along the northern section of the Pacific Plate here, mostly twos and ones uh, across the west coast. Um, let's see what we got here inland. Small amount of earthquake activity up in Montana. Uh, nothing showing up here across Yellowstone, but let's just double check that to see if anything's hiding out here. If it's working, there we go. There is the six pointer. That's going to be the uh, 6.3 showing up from the Japan earthquake a few hours ago. That did show up um, fairly nicely across all the seismograph stations here. And I know that's a, a few thousand miles away from Yellowstone, but these uh, seismograph stations do pick up earthquakes at a, distant, a distance when they're that large. Uh, Northern California, a handful of smaller quakes out here. The Bay Area, fairly quiet. Our swarming region from yesterday. Looks like we've seen a handful of other quakes here today as well um, at least four after midnight local time here uh, that's going to bring a total tally here in this swarming area up to about 50 earthquakes here in the Coso Junction the Coso volcanic range out here uh, so still kind of keeping an eye on that the multitude of quakes are a little bit calmer today compared to yesterday but still I think we need to watch the Southern California area because it seems like activity roughly about here across the shear zone southward i mean we got to include that area up there as well so pretty much right about here is uh seeing some elevated activity yesterday and still today we got a little bit of uh movement at the southern end here of the brawley seismic zone that's the extensional fault of the plate boundary where it connects to the imperial fault which extends further south along the uh, gulf of california and if you look further south down here 
We had a swarm of earthquakes yesterday, and we're still getting some today. Uh, the Earthquake 3D Globe looks like it... Uh, yeah, it's showing some of the activity from yesterday as well. Uh, definitely a handful or more earthquakes along this plate boundary here. And uh, last night we said to keep an eye on this area further up north. Not seeing any larger movement yet, but still keep an eye on it because we're seeing these little key indicators of swarms up north, little possible swarms here at the plate boundary just before the San Andreas Fault uh, that are giving us a key indicator of regional stress out here. Uh, so just a heads up, keep an eye on the SoCal area today. Further out and about, Texas area, you know, I hate to say it, but it's typical out there now. Earthquakes happening almost daily. Um, pretty decent swarm here yesterday outside of the um, San Antonio area here to the southeast. This area riddled with a lot of oil fields, and these oil fields continuously get hit. And there's wastewater disposal ponds out here as well. A lot of oil pumping operation pads out there, and that will continue for years to come. Some of these earthquakes can get larger up into the 5 range as well. Uh, Oklahoma, minimal activity today. One lonesome, well, looks like maybe we got two earthquakes out there from last night in the New Jersey area. Of course, this area has seen a you know, decent earthquake here, quite rare 4.8 uh, a couple weeks ago now. That brings the total tally of earthquakes up to about 89 for total, uh, including that 4.8. The 4.8 down here was the main shaker. And, of course, the multitude of quakes here have kind of died off with time as expected. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Got a little bit of movement happening here today around the Puerto Rico Trench. Really nothing major concerning here. This is mostly in the deeper regions. Uh, well, those are about 10, 17 kilometers or so on the southwestern side, southern edge here of Puerto Rico. Uh, tends to happen quite a bit here in this area because we got the Mariotos Trough, the Puerto Rico Trench up here. A couple different subduction zones squeezing and lifting this land. Uh, so a lot of activity takes place there. A little bit of movement here across the Middle America Trench from yesterday. That was a 4.4. And uh, this area in general was quite heightened. It's still quite heightened up here across the area of the Gulf of California, as you can see on the globe. A little bit of further southward movement here across the region of Nicaragua area, it looks like. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. South America, clustering going on. This is a very common area as well for earthquakes. It may seem like a lot, you know, on the globe, but these are all twos and threes. And this is a major subduction zone area. If you look right here on the South America plate, you got the Nazca plate here being pushed underneath the South American plate. Arrows pointing there towards the subduction zone. So this earthquake or this uh, activity we're seeing today is very common all along the Middle America Trench. Uh, anywhere there's a subduction zone, there's always almost continuous earthquake activity. Uh, let's check out the Iceland earthquake map and see what's going on here today. See if anything new has changed. We've got about 51 earthquakes here across the entire rift zone here of the Iceland area. Down here across the Grindavik area, really not seeing anything further across this region that had, had some swarming out here a couple days ago. It was getting a little interesting here. Made me think that uh, there was maybe some intrusion going on here as far as magma below the Grindavik area. But it looks like that has since died off. We'll continue to watch that, though. Really no major change happening for now uh, across that area. And if you look at the update from yesterday... Uh, the Icelandic Met Office just kind of talked about the overall assessment where Krendevik is considered uh, to be in the orange area. That could include some faults, um, lava flows and whatnot. Uh, the crater up there, the large crater, continues uh, to remain active. Space weather activity, see what's going on here today. I know we've seen the X-flare probability bump up to 10%. That is because we have quite a few sunspots facing the Earth right now. The large ones is at that. Uh, in fact, this area right here was originally uh, 3615 back a trip ago around the sun. Back when it was uh, you know, about 30 days or so ago when it was producing numerous inflares. Today, it's uh, littered with multiple different sunspot cores and they are amplifying a little bit. Looking like we're uh, seeing a little bit of growth here at the northern end. And uh, this massive sunspot up here as well needs a little bit of watching. So overall threat right now 
is a decent chance for some strong flaring. Again, 10% chance for an X flare, M flare at 65% chance, and 99% chance there for a C flare. The solar flux index here, the energy that's being produced here from these flares or the sunspots in general, is elevated at around 199. As uh, far as auroras go, look like we might have potential auroras coming up here on the UTC date of April 18th. Um, really not expecting too much here. Just a little unsettled conditions here over the next couple nights. Storm Prediction Center here for severe weather. This is the current day one outlook here. As you can see, Great Lakes states here getting a little bit of severe weather potential with a 5% and a 2% chance for tornado probability. A lot less than what we've seen over the last couple days when that storm system was back further to the west. Uh, some wind and maybe some hail threats out here as well around Wichita, northward portions of Missouri and Nebraska out here seeing that severe weather threat. Now as we head into the weekend time frame, we got... Uh, a decent storm gearing up out here in Texas. A lot of rain. I don't see any major severe weather threats. Uh, just mostly a lot of heavy rain associated with these storms that are going to take place here towards the weekend and Sunday. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, let's see here. We got a storm system back out here in California once again that's going to be stirring up. Uh, quite a bit of rain coming in here for an April, end of April event. A little odd. But, uh, hey, I appreciate it. Any rain is beneficial. That system could spell a little bit of trouble later in on the weekend, depending on where it's going to go here. See that low pressure was floating around a little bit. Looks like that may separate, preventing any major severe weather threat here uh, towards the end of next week. But uh, it does remain unsettled. Look at a lot of the green on the map. This here is around Sunday night of next weekend. Not this weekend, but next weekend. That could be a little severe weather maker. And uh, following that, you know, it looks it looks to remain active here, at least into maybe the first week of May. So we'll continue to watch that, keep an eye on it. Definitely some beneficial moisture out here going to be uh, accumulating across this area where they had been dealing with some droughts here recently. So this, will, this is actually good news uh, for uh, the folks that live out here and the farmers and whatnot as far as the precipitation goes. Hopefully we can keep the severe weather at bay. But that's always a threat this time of year. Um, let's see. What do we got for asteroid approaches out here? As far as the next five asteroids, that includes the date of today. We got a couple asteroids here. These are pretty distant, though. Look at that. Three million miles away. Uh, the closest one looks to be 606,000 uh, miles away for a 27-foot size asteroid. Really nothing on the agenda or map today of concern. Seismograph stations out there look fairly calm across the board. A little spike there at Yellowstone, Net, or uh, Mount St. Helens, that is. Uh, but they've been dealing with a handful of smaller quakes here recently as well. Really nothing changing out there, just occasional earthquake or two. All right, folks, have a good day. Stay safe, and, uh, you know, earthquakes can happen anytime. As I showed you guys, we're not elevated compared to last year. In fact, we're a couple hundred earthquakes behind. Uh, remember, these are very common. Earthquakes happen every single day, pretty much everywhere. It just seems like more people are reporting on the earthquakes and more people are being aware of the uh, continual plate movement out here that creates these earthquakes. It's just a very common natural occurrence. Um, so, yeah, stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on uh, unless something major happens. Have a good day, folks. Enjoy your Wednesday.